Today's Stripe Show podcast is brought to you by About Golf Simulators. We're back, Stripe Show podcast. On a Tuesday, I'm your host, Travis Fulton. Hope you had a great Labor Day weekend. Took yesterday off. Back at it today. No tournament to talk about, so... I gave Keith Stewart the day off. That's the least I can do. You know, 10 winners throughout the year that he picked on a Tuesday. He'll be back as we get closer uh, to the Ryder Cup. Of course, we got an event coming up out in uh, California, the Fortnite Championship. The guy that's going to be playing that, Justin Thomas, uh, I just loaded in some great video that he just posted on his social media that we're going to be looking at. And we're going to kick it around uh, with a guy that's also out in California, Long Beach, one of the top teachers in the game. He's back on the pod, Dana Dahlquist. Thank you, my man. How you doing? Doing great. How are you? I'm I'm good. I'm I'm good. You know, I um, it's funny. We took like what three days, three and a half days off. Uh, drove up to North Carolina, played uh, some golf up there in the mountains with the family, and I'm back. And I'm not gonna lie, I got in here this morning, and I was like, damn. I'm gassed, you know, I need a vacation from the three and a half to game vacation uh, with the family. But then I saw these videos come across uh, of JT and I was like, oh, <laughs> I've got Dana on. And this is the ammo that JT is going to give us the, yeah. the most controversial pick in the Ryder Cup, a guy that's struggling. Yeah. And this is what he posts to get a swing back more on that later. I can't wait to get to. <laughs> your thoughts on that but we got to start man we got to um well, let me ask you this first i've yeah. been meaning to ask this to you september in california i know i know the weather's always like primo out there but like september in california in the instruction business the golf business is it kind of like a mini off season or do you just like just keep it rolling yeah it it keeps going we have um high schools that are you know ramping up with their competition mm -hmm. You have junior golf that's slowing down, high schools that speed up, colleges that are starting. Um, that's on the competitive end. We have, um, you know, obviously the Napa tournament next week. Um, yeah, so it just, on top of the regular day in and day out instruction, you have that to kind of consider. So, um, yeah, it, we don't really have an off season here unless it's raining mm -hmm. at all. Um, because if it rains at all, they call it a flood. So, you know, it's... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so we don't really we don't slow down. I think I think you were on the podcast about this time last year, right? Because did, did yeah. do you go to the Fortnite? You you how far is that yeah. from you? Uh, it's about five hours. Yeah, I mean you can jump on a plane okay. and get drive an hour and a half, where you can drive yeah. five hours to your podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Listen <laughs> to the podcast. Well, your podcast when you're on, it always it always does well, and I think this is this is gonna be a good one, folks, because. I have so many videos loaded in underneath. I don't think this is uh, this is a record here. I think in the amount of golf swings um, that <laughs> we're going to look at, and we got to start with a guy that uh, you started working with um, this year, earlier this year, I believe, in uh, Bryson DeChambeau. Yeah. And I'm gonna I'm gonna lay this out there, Dana, before we bring in his swing and some of the things um, that you guys have been working on. But I, I look at this year. And there's been a lot of like really cool kind of comeback stories, guys that have kind of got their game back in order. Like Ricky Fowler obviously wins a rocket mortgage. We know his struggles and what he went through. Jason Day and his back has come back and he won um, at the AT&T. Victor Hovland short game and all of a sudden now that's not a weakness anymore. And the guy goes and wins the BMW and the Tour Championship. Kepka, you know, after watching um, the Netflix series Full Swing, was like, damn, you know. What's, what's happened to Brooks? He comes back, wins the PGA and the live. And even like Bryson to some degree, I felt like Bryson, you know, was kind of, I don't think, I don't, I don't want to say he lost his game, but he just wasn't playing Bryson mm. kind of golf, right? Like we saw in winning the US Open and, and the force that he was when he put on the weight and all this distance and yeah. say what you want, like it was, it was working. I mean, Bryson was playing some excellent golf. And yep. then all of a sudden, kind of Bryson, I felt like, you know, struggled a little bit. He changed instructors, went to you, Dana. When you when you took over Bryson, mm -hmm. what was your analysis as you looked at it 
that have has laid the groundwork to now to what is Bryson playing really, really good golf, highlighted yeah. by a 58 at Greenbrier. Yeah. Lay us through that analysis when you first started with him. Yeah, so um, we have to kind of look at the timeline effectively here. So the very first thing that we wanted to kind of consider um, when Bryson was in full control of his golf swing, his ball speed, let's just say, was averaging 170. Okay, so that was mm-hmm. 2017, 17, right in there. And, um, you know, he built a swing that was predicated on accuracy. So he was a very good long right. iron player, great driver of the golf ball. And, um, you know, at that time, he, as he should, he looked at particular weaknesses in his game. And being that he is um, thoughtful about that, he deep dove into adding speed. So, um, you know, got really involved into the long drive thing and not to get long winded here, you know, literally, you know, finished almost first, but lost to Martin Borgmeier, who's a absolute freak. Mm -hmm. So, um, and Martin in a good way, you're a freak. Um, So anyway, um, (laughs) right. So, (laughs) And um, in doing such, you know, he he changed his physiology, changed his diet, changed his workout. And, um, you know, it's interesting because in doing such, he he got to different in ranges. And one of the things that his golf swing was built on was in range. And um, that would create stability in his pattern and um, predictability. So when he overlaid a bunch of speed to the system, that changed a lot of things in his in range. Um, now, what's interesting is when I got involved, there was not like the substantial control factor, but he still had the speed. So um, I tried to explain because I kind of live in both both worlds where, um, you know, I'm number one, 98 percent of the time, 99 percent of the time um, in just golf swing. But I do dabble with um, a little bit of a long drive as well, because, mm-hmm. um, you know, one business partners is one of the fastest guys on the planet and uh that's josh and so i kind of understand both sides of the coin and that also gets into like the golf swing side of things so Mm -hmm. majority of my career was around the geometry of the swing but once you get to a certain point you have to break those molds and really understand like ground force reaction stuff um you have to understand um dynamics and how those things overlay on top of geometry. And um, geometry doesn't necessarily, um, you know, when you get into that world, um, give you everything. And the case in point is like, I could have somebody on 3D make a golf swing at 185 and do the exact same 3D and do it at 195. Um, And you don't really see the difference, but you do see it in Newton's of force. So, joint calculations aren't exactly the same at this present time maybe in the future we'll get there but we don't have that so anyway um it was kind of like building the mesh between his geometry his in range and then force production and then kind of blend that together so that he had control now what's very interesting about this conversation and and this is where you know in, in my opinion and bryson could completely uh, disagree with me on this. Um, he he has it now, so like he doesn't need to do anything in his golf swing anymore. Mm-hmm. It's where it needs to be, um, which is great. That's that was the goal. So we, yeah. we hit our goal where we're at. Um, now it kind of facilitates itself into the equipment side of things. So um, he's obviously a tinker, um, and he's going to definitely get to the bottom of it. But one of the things that was very impactful was you saw him make a driver change. Right. And Mm -hmm. uh, he went to equipment, which is the long drive head that will sustain um, 190 and above ball speed. So um, that's where the long drive heads and whatnot, they're they're built for that. And so what's interesting is he's going in that route with that. Um, I'm nice. It's nice to be a fly on the wall uh, Mm -hmm. station. But. yeah, that's kind of where things are. And, and it's interesting because um, it really, when he's in that place, it really to kind of to happen. And mm-hmm. um, 
when he doesn't have control and, and all players are the same with this. Like they don't feel like they have that control. Um, they're not in the right side of their brain. They're not, you know, they're not being an athlete. So it's really allowed Bryson to um, have control and also be an athlete at the same time. And hence mm-hmm. why he shoot the scores that he does. So speaking of driver, here he is. This was a video. I think Did I get this off your site. No, I think I got this off Bryson's site actually. Yeah. He was hitting hitting a driver off the ground. Look at this. Yeah. yeah. Or it's teed up very, very low. So technically, when you look at the geometry of this, I mean, there's not so there's not a whole lot of change, right? From a geometry standpoint, if I'm if I'm understanding you the right that 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 you've made with his overall swing. Yeah. So it's more like going back to what can we do from 2018 that we do today? And so yeah little shorter this year than it was maybe previous year and then also his mm-hmm. release pack or matching what it did in 2018 so those are those are really the big pieces um so like how he's releasing the club through the ball you know in his lead arm is is you know more comparable to 2018 so what what does that take us through that as far as kind of what we're seeing there with the release yeah so he has um more kind of if you look at his lead his lead wrist is is on the weaker end mm-hmm. and through the ball he has more supination of his lead arm and external right. rotation of his arm as he hits it um which inevitably is also keeping his his arc and, and 3d flat spot very very wide so mm-hmm. one of the reasons why he's able to do this and some players can't um he can keep layering speed into his system because the arc is so wide it doesn't disrupt face to path so um which is great you know that's what mm-hmm. that's kind of kind of very very similar to maybe like a uh steve stricker you know had a very wide arc yeah um it, it's kind of like how much how much energy can you put in the system and have sustainability which kind of goes against the notion of trying to create lag and like golf machine max trigger delay and a bunch of other stuff um which is you know in, in and of itself kind of a different pattern but uh, when you start going down that road, the bottom becomes much less uh, wide. So he's so right there. He's taking yeah. on more supination. Where before was yeah. he trying to to hold that off? Well, I wouldn't oh. say tr- that. That's what's interesting. Um, he wasn't trying. What was occurring was that wouldn't happen. And I think a lot of it was because of um, you know it's kind of two pieces it was kind of a it was the equipment doing it mm-hmm. um he felt like there was a rate of closure issue and so therefore he couldn't freely do it now what was interesting is when we started um this is like right before the pga um you know he was number one in driving that week and um and strokes game driving and you know finished really well i think he finished fourth or third um it was interesting like he had full control over it um, but there was still a little bit where he wasn't. So it took a little bit of tinkering. Um, and every player at this level, and when we're looking at something as, as you know, as respect to feel, you almost can't put your finger on it. Now, the, the player's responding to that. Mm-hmm. So, um, and, you know, being a perfectionist as he should, um, he went down the rabbit hole on that, which was great. Yeah, yeah. I want to ask you about this right hip, because I, you know... I think one of the the last seminar I was at, um, and you were there, and, and I was talking to you a little bit about this, and then mm-hmm. you you went on stage, and someone asked you about the right hip and that right hip movement yeah. to the top. Like if I drew a line on his, you know, diagonally across his leg at a dress, and then I stopped it at the top, like his right hip has moved a little bit away from that line. Oh, absolutely. Right? Yeah, his right hip has moved a little bit away from that line. Yeah. Now, you you see a lot of players where that pelvis will, you know, kind of move a little, a little to the right, and then that right hip will climb, and that right hip will stay more on that line. Yeah, right? Nick would be one, right? Say it again. Like Nick Watney. Nick Watney. Yeah, there you go. Um, and I'll show you another one here in a second. Uh, that's a great driver of the ball. Um, talk about that right hip movement, like the dynamic, because we do see a little bit, we do see both with great players. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, 
I, I kind of look at it in two, two fashions. So like mm -hmm. you could do what Bryson's doing and not have enough load into your trail hip. And, you know, I do see that on the range. So that would be like a reverse hip slide. Right. And, um, with Bryson, he has a little bit of a trigger where he pushes his uh, pressure into his trail leg before he takes it back. And, in, and inevitably, it makes him appear to have a very centered pivot, you know, which, mm -hmm. which is good because that keeps you in the accuracy realm. Yeah. Uh, but what he doesn't do is he doesn't perform a, um, he doesn't go into hip extension. And that's where people kind of get this wrong, where if, if you just straighten the right leg too early and that you, your right hip goes into extension, you essentially lose your, your back chain. So like your, your trail glute, hamstring, back, doesn't go through the facilitation of winding. So now for your average everyday player, this is probably a really good thing because you're going to hit out on the golf ball and you're probably right. not. But um, yeah. if you're a good player and you struggle with loading the trail hip, then you might, you know, be more like Rory who kind of loads a little more, right. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, he does it even before he takes the club away. And then he's more into his trail hip as he winds. And then he drops back kind of where Bryson is. Mm -hmm. So, um, and both of which are both drawers of the golf ball. So, um, it, it just kind of depends. And then on the other side of the spectrum, I said, Nick, um, I don't know who you're going to show, but like, in Watney's respect, like he loads more into his trail hip. And the more you, you load laterally um, into the trail hip, the more, you know, transverse torque you're going to provide through your system, which generally is a fade pattern. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't mean that Nick doesn't get back to his lead side. He does. He just does it differently than Rory McIlroy or Bryson DeChambeau. So, um, yeah, it, and I think that's a big issue with a lot of amateurs so mm -hmm. um you know you were gonna show somebody i'm, I'm very well i was gonna you know I, I wish i had you know, what's interesting i wish i had tiger um like young tiger yeah versus tiger in like 2000 and mm -hmm. i don't know 12 yeah you know like like young tiger you could see like you know move to the right back to the left and and then he got into a little bit of where you could see his right hip kind of doing a little more of Bryson and his head would drop in the backswing a little bit and his, in his driving. I mean, you know, he kind of struggled with that. Right. Um, it's just, it's always an interesting conversation to me. Cause I, it, you know, like when I um, watch this hip, yeah, like I tend, this is t what I tend to do. I'm not Bryson's caliber player, nor do I hit it anywhere near Bryson hits it. But like when my right hip will do that right there. Yeah. And the more I kind of do that, the, the the harder it is for me to kind of get out of the way coming through. I almost like, I yeah. feel like I don't have enough time to get out of the way. Yeah. You know, versus when I load a little bit more, you know, I feel, I feel like I'm a little more stacked on that right hip and then I can almost kind of like fall left and then go. And I feel like I have a little more time to like open up and, and, yeah. and create more rotation. So would you say people like these better players that do this, they can move like pretty dynamically. Obviously, Bryson can, can he can get out of the way, you know, um, with that right hip. Is it harder for an amateur? Would you say to, it's give and take, right? Like yeah. that right hip can give them some depth to swing from the inside, which is a good thing. And for many of them, like that, that might be the first thing time they've ever done that. Have ever done that. So like you're not really trying to get them to open up per se so much through impact. Yeah. So, um, and, and in fact, if anything. Um, if you're trying to do that with an amateur, you're trying to reduce the opening up, you know, because <laughs> right. yeah. it's, it's one of those things where, and I feel you on that. Like yeah. the, the thing that's unique with, with Bryson, he's able to get, you know, 85% pressure into that trail leg and still do what he does. Wow. So, um, and that's, that's, just, that's cool. Mm. Yeah. And that, that's, what's interesting where, um, you know, most people aren't able to do that. Now, some of this is just, you know, he's an elite athlete and he also has particular wrist angles that allow him to do it, mm -hmm. um, which is, which is interesting. But like, I would say majority of my players kind of do what you described, you know, they, they, mm -hmm. they load their pressure to the right and how you do that is dependent upon, you know, you know, particulars, but um, it does allow them to drop the mass quicker to the left. 
uh, for players that struggle to do that. So, um, yeah, it, you know, by, by no means am I going to have anybody move their pelvis too far to the right and then not recover from that. I think that's right. like a big message. And yeah, uh, that's good. I like we that. Want, we want to cover our bases here, right? It's yeah. like, I like that. No, I yeah. think that's really well summarized. Um, you, you don't want to move that pelvis enough to the right enough to the point where they can't recover. Yeah, I yeah. think that's, I think that's, uh, I think that's well set. Hack Motion is an innovative wrist analysis sensor and app that measures players' wrist and hand movement in the golf swing. With audio feedback and different drill modes, it offers the capability to improve players' wrist mechanics in the golf swing to provide a better club face control and impact position. Hack Motion can be used for both full swing and putting to cover all golf shots. Hack Motion is used by some of the top golf coaches today around the world. Visit hackmotion.com. All right, let's. The guy I'm going to show you here in a minute um, is this guy. We're going to get to him here in a second, but you know, yeah. here's a guy that kind of, you know, kind of drifted to the right. Another guy that comes to my mind is uh, Henrik Stenson. Remember that move? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that dude, that dude moved his pelvis before the club even moved. Yeah. So we'll get to him here in a second, but man, we got to go here. I mean, all right. <laughs> Justin has come through again. I love Justin Thomas because he puts it out there, you know, yeah. as far as, hey guys, I'm grinding. I'm working. Hasn't been a great year for Justin Thomas. We know that. Uh, uh, you know, the guy is part of the fabric of professional golf in this country and has been, and and I believe, and the, you know, very much the heart and soul, as Zach Johnson put it, when it comes to team format, Ryder Cup, et cetera. Uh, finished 15 in points. His, his swing, his iron game, nowhere near what we're used to seeing from JT. His putting was kind of a wreck. But he posts this today. And so here we go, Dana. We've got our pool noodles out, all this stuff. I'm going to play it through. And you're out there all the time on tour, and you see Justin Thomas hitting balls up close. And yeah. and you look at this contraptions here and, and the way that it's set up. What, uh, what comes to mind here, what you think, JT, and what he's working on? Well, it's kind of three things. The very first thing is, uh, Mike, don't kill me for my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> his oh, dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I like his dad a lot. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it, it is a little bit different. Um, I think the first thing, and and it's kind of interesting because, you know, Justin's an elite competitor. Um, and I do believe what, what Zach Johnson says, you know, is 100% like, if you're going to bet on anybody, it's, it's going to be Justin Thomas is one of those guys that you bet on. And mm -hmm. I think he unfairly a little bit after a little bit of a slump kind of got dragged through a little bit of, um, of the mud. And, you know, it's hard to stay off social media as a player. You know, you get on there and, <laughs> you know, you might read a comment or two and it's hard. Like, it's really hard. And that is not giving you anything positive as confidence. So then you start kind of looking at, okay, like what should I do? You know, and should I go into the technical world and start changing things? Should I um, just read particular books, hang with certain people? And in his credit, like he hangs with the right people I and mean, he hangs with Tiger Woods for, you know, greatest golfer of all time. He might as well. And um, being around, who you associate with is probably the most uh, outside of just golf. So I think it's interesting to see him work on stuff. Now you show me this and I go, okay, like what really sticks out? Well, like off the ball, the takeaways is different. It is different for him. Like um, his hand path going a little bit wider, right? A little more, a little wider, a little more yeah. out. Um, yep. And to be honest, like, I don't mind that. I, I think it's pretty good. The some of the issue I do have is that his hand pass more out at lead arm parallel at position three. Um, that would know. be lead, yeah, position three, lead arm parallel for our audience, right? Right there. Yeah. Um, so that is a little bit more out. Um, out it, meaning uh, towards the target side. Yeah, it's towards yeah. the 
ball that middle of the hands is closer to the ball than yep. you know previously um and then you know the other thing that sticks out is kind of parallel to the ground shaft p6 um kind of at the release point if you want to call it that um i know the top's a little different but like this one right there kind of sticks um, out Love that's that's touch I, I i i hit for the audio i hit it just a touch late but parallel yeah. yeah yeah that club is definitely more outside the hands yep um than some of his others and you know that is going to impact how his side bend goes through you mm -hmm. know so he's a little more covery um than some of the older swings so that's just what i see yeah and and here's another video okay and this video when i we edited it, uh, got cut down just a little bit. And what Justin did before, and this is the same, uh, this is at Troubadour yeah. uh, out, outside of Nashville. And um, what he did right before he took this back, Dana, is he took it back and you could see his hands, you know, a little wider like you talked about. Yeah. And then he rotated the shaft more horizontal. You could see him trying to feel something a bit more horizontal. Hmm. Uh, and then of course he would kind of reset it and hit it. So, so when you say, in, or, what did you mean like a flatter flatter? Yeah. Not yeah. as you could tell, you could tell he was rehearsing flatter, uh, yeah. with the shaft. So yeah. you pair the two together to me, it appears like, okay, first move hand path a little bit wider out in front yeah. and then let's rotate the left form and the shaft. Is that, I mean, uh, shaft's hanging a little more left now. I mean, at the top too, I think, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Hang, it, it's hanging a little more left. And then, and then from there, let's, to your point, let's cover it, right? Let's, it's definitely a little more on top coming down and, and yeah. let's, and let's cover it. So I, to me, there's three things. One hand path initially with some forearm rotation and that shaft a bit more, a bit flatter and then back on top. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you on that. hundred <laughs> percent. All right, now check this out. This is the last Ryder Cup. That hand pass not out. Yeah. Is it? Nope. I mean, look at the difference in the left arm to the chest. Yeah. Yeah, he's okay. more age rotation, hand path more in. Club, the club head a little, a couple degrees outside the hands. Right. Yep. Sure. And then as a result, I think naturally that shaft probably going to be a bit more vertical there. Yeah. Um, this isn't quite the same camera angle, so we're just kind of casually discussing this. Um, and then that's way different. Yeah. So way more X factor stretch, more separation, hips more open, right shoulder is going to right side bend more. I mean, yeah. I mean, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I mean, yeah. It's pretty interesting, really, when you think about. I mean, this is the Ryder Cup um, a couple of years ago. What it was, um, I'm drawing a blank. We're, so were you, straight. Up, were you up all night, like finding these? <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, this is yeah, I'm kind of geeking out. You know, it's like That's tired. <laughs> well, I, I've had this one. I've had this okay. one. It, you know, and this is a good look. It's you know, the camera's a little bit different, but I mean, you can, you know, we've looked at enough video that we you can kind of get an idea here what's going on and, and to your point i mean that is very different you know coming down right there you go back uh, now you go back to here and you bring this in and you look at that move right there and that's different yeah look at the left arm look at the left arm to the chest yeah, yeah it's just that's just very different and then you know that shaft rotate a bit yeah you know it's yeah. interesting travis like you know, we watched, you know, Tiger and Faldo and in our careers, you know, make mm -hmm. changes. And, um, you know, my hope, you know, one thing that's never going to die is the the players, you know, tenacity and their ability to, to play the game and their competitiveness. Like that's, that's something you can't buy. Um, and I mean, even Joe says that about Victor, right? Like, like you can't teach that. So. Right. Um, which is fantastic. And um, my hope, because I'm, I'm obviously like sitting in a chair, I have no idea what, the, what he's doing, but um, my hope is that this does bring more control to the table for him. 
Mm -hmm. um, I think what's also interesting maybe for the viewers to understand is like the, the lengths that these players will go to, um, to get better, you know, and yeah. it's not like, Oh, I'm just going to simplify it down to one thing because, um, that doesn't change anything. So I yeah. mean, the JT, like he's putting some work in for sure. Oh, well, there's no doubt. Yeah. No doubt about it. No doubt. Yeah. But I mean, JT's grinding right now. I mean, he is working his ass off to get ready to go. There's no doubt. So all my students listen to this, to pay attention that he's putting some work. In. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. You don't get the JT's level just showing up and being, no. you know, like, hey, I'm good. I'm good at golf, guys. You know, and watch. The, I mean, these guys, they do. You, you make such a good point, and they just, you know, I remember when I when I was teaching a ton and running TPC Sawgrass and all these players, and I I can remember I had a run there with Fred Funk for like six years, and and I, and I remember like we were uh, texting back and forth. And he was on the road and they stayed out on the road. There was a week off, but they just stayed out there. Yeah. And so I, I, I taught Taylor when he was young through high school and into college. And, and I said, what are you guys doing on your day off? And they're like, oh, we're on this. We're on the, uh, the 12th hole. I'm like, hmm. what? They're like, yeah, we've already played 18. This is our second. Eight. I'm like, you guys are nuts, man. Like, <laughs> like you, you know, Fred, I mean, you're nuts. Like you just all they just golf. Yeah. Golf. 24 hours a day the passion the love the burn inside it's it's incredible to watch and firsthand yeah, yeah you, you have to that's the the archetype of behavior that needs to happen because if yeah. it's there then um you, you know you're not none of these guys are playing for second place yeah and, um if you're top 100 in the world that you you're, you don't show up to play for second place yeah and um jt obviously you know, you know he's enrolling in tournaments believing that he's going to win mm -hmm. um the reason why he believes that is because he's backing it up with a work ethic which is yeah. great great so i i think it's fair to say jt um you know he's trying to create a little more room here um with the hand pat the lead arm trying to trying to cover it get on top of it just a little bit more versus Maybe when you look at this pattern where, you know, he was feeling his hands and shaft maybe a bit too vertical right there where then things yeah. would kind of get trapped behind him a little bit and, you know, and he just couldn't do what he wanted to do, path-face relationship and get obviously the ball flight that he's looking for. So, um, and I so mean, like you said, hopefully it gives him the control he's looking for. Yeah. Yeah, that's my hope. That's yeah. my hope. Yeah. Yeah. Here's that driver swing one last time. And then I'm going to bring in, then I'm going to bring in a guy that you mentioned. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hovland here. Okay. And so Victor Hovland, I did an all things Victor Hovland pod last week. And, and I was talking with, I, I was, I kind of wear Joe out with text from time to time <laughs> and um, over the year. And, and so Joe's always been forthright and like, yeah, man, this is kind of, you know, some of the things we're doing. And so like, I've been kind of talking like Victor Hovland, where he's going and what he's been working on for months now. Yeah. And so to see it come to fruition uh, and, and the light come on and be like, oh, I'm the best player in the world now. <laughs> you know, like I don't have a weakness anymore. Yeah. And off I go. Yeah. But when you look at Victor, yeah, there's there's two things I want to ask you about. Okay. One is mm -hmm. is when player when 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 an audience sees this move right here, Dana, the hand path go out, yeah. let's say more than down versus what their eyes used to sink like a Rory McIlroy first almost like when I first got into teaching 23 years ago I can remember like kind of being taught like okay you bump you, you bump left yeah you know the old bump spine yeah. kind of your right shoulder kind of drops and your hands come down right like that's yeah. you know kind of yeah instruction. that's kind of what it was kind of you know very much part of the lexicon of of golf instruction you know sure. 20 years ago but when someone sees this and they see their hand path go out, not down, yeah, they're like, wow, he's coming over the top. Yeah. Right. Even though the shaft's <laughs> pitching back and you see that club exiting to the left. So I want to talk to you a little bit about that hand path, like, you know, that hand path going out that we see with certain players um, versus versus down. And yeah. then the second thing is, is with that, when you look at Victor, 
Um, he's kind of that in vogue rotator, isn't he? Like you were yeah. saying when we were texting him, and he's like, let's let's rotate, let's fly open, let's let's sure. do all those things. There goes the hand path. Here goes rotation. Look at this left hip showing up to the camera. Yeah. All right. Give me give me your give me your two cents on that pattern. Yeah. So in Victor's case, and <laughs> and not all guys that rotate have all these things going for him. So Victor obviously has you know an attachment with a lot of wrist flexion and the lead wrist, um, and he also has an aim bias slightly right. So um, good that, point. Yep. The, kind of zero him out he's he's always had that and mm -hmm. what's what's really cool and i you know joe's joe's a friend of mine um mm -hmm. joe so, mayo for our audience yep so and and victor is too so like we we chat a little bit i we, i never talk golf swing with uh other coaches because i don't want to like yeah i don't want them to feel like i have ever have any ulterior motives or anything but so but just from like an appearance like joe's really good at taking complex information and then, you know, making it like, this is what you need to do. And, um, <laughs> right. That's which, good. Yeah. I, I, yeah. That's, that's a, that's a so, skill <clears throat> so with, um, with, in Victor's case, like it was just like, okay, like this piece, this piece, this piece mm -hmm. are essentially making the ball do what it's doing. And then this is your miss bias. So therefore you're going to add this piece to reduce the miss bias. Like that's kind of how I would do it without getting into particulars. But in Victor's, right. like he has an in hand path going back, a right aim bias, and then hands do come out. But he also has a lead arm that kind of stays up, trail arm that goes under, and he's very good at rotating and side bending to accommodate his wrist angles that are going to go from flexion to extension mm -hmm. uh, through the impact interval and allow him to keep rotating left to um you know keep that face continuity if you want to call that even though it doesn't really exist but um in 2d it does um mm -hmm. of rate of closure so um and the other interesting thing is that john sinclair has been pretty instrumental because joe in joe's case like joe wants to be right and so he gets quanti quantifiable data that um you know for his players which i think is yep. really and probably a good thing for try to emulate you know mm -hmm. get the best data you can mm -hmm. so that you're not really guessing um because with a 2d camera you know sometimes some some things are pretty evident some things are not so um yeah he's he, they, they've done a good job uh, working together for sure Attention golfers, if you're looking to upgrade your game with a set of high-quality clubs that are blazing fast, beyond forgiving, and beautifully made, check out the all-new PXG Gen 6 Golf Clubs. Not only are they easy to hit, they deliver outstanding distance and incredible accuracy, lowering your scores and bringing you more fun on the golf course. What more could you want? Schedule your Gen 6 fitting today at pxg.com or by calling 844-PLAY-PXG. And, and on those lines, like I did a thing with my, with my hack motion on my left wrist. Yeah. And I was talking to Joe about how much flexion he has in his left wrist. And so I was trying to put my wrists in those same conditions. And let me tell you something, Dana, I can't do it. I can't yeah. do it. My wrist, I was so tired in like 30 minutes trying to, I was trying to swing like Victor, his yeah. wrist angles. <laughs> tell you something, holding on, I can do it without a club. No problem. Yeah. But holding a club, I can't, I couldn't get my wrist to do that. Secondly, yeah. there ain't no way in the world I could rotate like this. Yeah, that's the other issue. Yeah, I can't so. rotate like this. I have My body can't do it. I mean, it, and most can't. So, like, it's in vogue. Okay, you know, this kind of get it up there, shallow it, and fly open. Man, yeah. that's, a, that's a hard thing to do. Now, I think in the world of in, in the world of instruction, when you maybe try to put a little bit more flexion in someone's lead wrist and you try to pitch the shaft back a little bit more to suggest a little more rotation, like that doesn't mean that we're trying to get we're, that doesn't mean that we're trying to get them to swing like Victor Hovland. It just right. means we're just maybe moving the needle that way just a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah, trying and to so Andrew's torque and the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so and so like it's interesting like this path, man. 
I go through this and I, and I try to like, I'll try to, I'll put myself in these guys' positions and try to swing like that. And I'm telling you right now, this is one guy. I have no chance to, yeah. to swing like this. Well, There's maybe. absolutely no chance. Now you don't have to fly open uh, no. and rotate like this to be a wonderful, you know, driver of the ball. Right. right. This guy was pretty good too. Greg Norman. Look at this swing. Yeah. Um, God, he, that, watch, watch these feet at, at the bottom. I mean, is this not Scottish? Watch this. Yeah. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Well, I, I think that's what <laughs> is really interesting about golf is we have, you know, we live in a world of preferences as teachers, and then um, we have to kind of think outside the box a little bit because mm -hmm. what if Scotty, you know, didn't drive it like God? Um, and it, <laughs> right. yeah. what are you going to do? And so, uh, you're not going to show him Victor Hovland. You would show him Greg Norman. Mm -hmm. and, um, what's interesting, Travis is like, you know, demographically, <laughs> um, if you teach a bunch of juniors, the, the chances with juniors is you might get 50% that could actually kind of be like a, a Victor or Colin or Kawa or guys that open very, very effectively. And then the other half are going to be, you know, kind of, you know, thrusters and releasers of the, the golf club, mm -hmm. like make it simple. Yeah. And, um, both of which are going to effectively drive the ball. It means the pattern of ball flight is probably going to be a little bit different. Um, but in Greg's case, like, you know, he was inhuman when it came to his ability to drive the ball down a fairway, including Nicholas. Like you can, yeah. you can kind of, and I think for, as the demographics get older, um, you know, more my age, cause I'm starting to get gray hair. Um, <laughs> you're probably gonna do more of, of what Greg's doing. It'd be mm -hmm. way more beneficial. Yep. To kind of do that. Um, especially for your body. So, yeah. And not get the face is shut at the top. Correct. And, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. So, I mean, it's, it's an interesting conversation when we, yeah. we kind of look at patterns and, um, there's certain things that need to happen. And, and, you know, um, this also, you know, this goes back to like the Morad stuff because, um, without getting into the weeds here, I'll try to simplify it. Like there was, there was a organic way to define different trajectories. So like if a player is hitting it really, really high, it versus really, really high and starting at left and cutting it, Mm -hmm. like what patterns have to be there. And then conversely, like if you're going to be Lee Trevino or Billy Casper and you're going to hit it low and draw it or low and cut it, yeah. what has to be there. And, um, you know, now, you know, with a lot of these players getting their swings on 3d and, you know, getting pressure monitored with corresponding radar track man, GC information, you can start seeing that how much of that was, were they on to? And then how much possibly was wrong. Like mm -hmm. that's, what's kind of cool to decipher. Um, but I think the, the big piece in this discussion is anatomically how you already move. So like, what's interesting is like Victor is his anatomy. He, he, he's got long arms, mm -hmm. um, you know, mobility, probably like, like DJ, you know, there's a lot of similarity. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And, um, which would be different than somebody who, you know, like Terrell Hatton, you know, is different built, right? So um, we have to kind of respect that. Yeah. Little. You know, I think at the end of the day, I mean, Vic, this is Victor with an iron, I know, but like with a driver, um, you know, Victor, all kinds of flexion, we know the shaft's really pitching back yeah. um, in transition, the dude's flying open. Yeah. You know, just an absolute beast mode driving the golf ball. You know, and here's another guy in his day, beast mode, driving the golf ball, left arm, you know, probably not as not quite as much depth, eh, close as Victor, but you know, you look at him coming down that shaft, I mean, this is 2d video and not very good, but you know, Norman, I don't think pitching the shaft back with a, no. a ton of flexion, like we saw with, with Victor and, you know, and, and as a result, you know, not opening up as quite as much and a little more of a release down the line shafts exiting a bit higher and you sure. know, so and here you got both guys just 
incredible. Two of the best, probably. Certainly, Greg. We'll see how it plays out with Victor, but all signs leading to, um, you know, just dominant with the driver off the tee. And Scheffler looks more like uh, Greg Norman. And that, and that's really, like you said, they're all kind of built a little bit differently. And where the, you know, for a teacher, um, where the art comes in, right? And getting in there and and figuring out, okay, what is this person capable of doing? Yeah. And then starting to kind of move that, you know, start to move the needle the right way. So components yeah. match up so they can control the ball. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, the big one that I get most frequently is kind of the exit. I get some players that go, mm. I want this picture to look like this. And I'm like, mm. listen, dude, like you do this, this, and this that don't equal that. And you're pretty good. So um, do you want to live in misery for a year or do you want <laughs> better next week so yeah um it's kind of one of those catch 22s where yeah you know yeah you know max homna has got a perfect you know pretty looking swing but you know if somebody's on the other side of the coin um you can't go down that road so right um yeah it's definitely interesting definitely let me tell you something if i if i committed to this if i committed just to the backswing the wrist angles i wouldn't break 100 for like like <laughs> Three months. I'm not shitting you. I mean, I couldn't. I mean, it is. I've seen Warren might break 95. <laughs> <laughs> I I can break 95 just hitting little bunts. Let's put it that way. You know, like not not re reaching back and letting that baby go into full frisbee mode on the other side. It'd yeah. be manufactured and hung on and fall back and you know like just trying to keep it reasonably <laughs> out there. Awesome. Yeah, it, it's it's a good exercise, man. It's a good exercise not only to watch it, but then to actually try to get in and demonstrate and try to put yourself in those positions to see what it would take to, you know, sure. hit a golf ball like that. Oh, absolutely. So, all right, man. I know you got I know you got nine lessons today. You're the man. We talked forever. I appreciate your time. Um, and I look forward to uh, running to you soon. Absolutely. That was a lot of fun. Thank you, right, Thanks, Dana. All right. Cheers.